myself, to enable myself to use my work in such a way that it becomes both God-glorifying and a great opportunity, as Bill said, to use, to be the hands and feet of Christ in the marketplace. Because when that happens, when we change purpose, here, here's a couple of examples. When you, ch- when you figure out purpose of things, they start to make sense. Simple example. I, I exercise most every day. I promise you it's not because it's fun, right? The reason I exercise is for what? So I can eat dessert. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really that simple. And my wife and I talk about this all the time. I mean, if I, if, I couldn't exor- if I didn't exercise, I'd probably have to stop the dessert thing. Or vegetables. I, I, I didn't grow up eating vegetables. I haven't learned to like vegetables, but I think you're supposed to eat vegetables so that you can stay healthy. Well, work's the same way. If our work has purpose, then all of a sudden, getting up in the morning is a whole lot more sensical. Have you ever noticed how ridiculously happy some people are in their work that make, are in relatively modest jobs and make relatively little money? What is that? What is that thing? I recently went through a toll booth in beautiful New Jersey, and there was a woman at the toll booth who, in three seconds, I could instantaneously tell she was joyous. What is that? Is that because she has the best job in the country? I don't think so, but she must because she, in literally in three seconds, she got me to to recognize Christ in that interchange and in that dialogue. And and that's my challenge is, my, my challenge has always been, I got my hands on the steering wheel so tight that I feel like I can control outcomes. I equate it to golf. Do we have any golfers in the room? Right? I, I, I'm embarrassed to say that I went out recently and shot 103. I can't even say it. I'm so embarrassed by it. <laughs> I shot 103, and I've been playing golf for 40 years. H- how can that be? And so when you're, when you're about the fifth hole and you've had three triple bogeys, what do you start doing with the club? You know, besides throwing them. I mean, literally, you cannot, you ought to see my grips sometimes. They've got, they've got carvings in them from my thumbs and my fingers, right? You start gripping the club tighter, because if I grip tighter and I swing harder, it, it, it can't get any worse, right? Well, don't we do the same thing in, our, in life and in, in our work? I know I did. It was a matter of putting your head down and be more diligent. And the more I figure out that if I let go and let God, and make him an integrated part of everything I do. Relationships, meetings, this kind of an event, whatever it is, I just want to make him a central part of that. You know, one of the verses in the Bible says, we're, we're, we're challenged to be joyful always, pray continuously. Does that sound like a lot to anybody else? Like, pray continuously and give thanks in all circumstances. Well, I think that's the challenge before us. And my, so here's my challenge maybe to all of you. As you think about our role in this whole process, what, what role can we take? I think there's both a corporate role, and I don't mean literally corporate America. I mean even the churches. I think all of us, if, 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 if I had an opportunity to talk to the average pastor, what I would say is, One of our key roles in the church is to equip the saints to go out and do the work, right? The work of the Lord. It's it's a little bit like Doug Spada, who's the CEO of a a ministry I'm involved with called His Church at Work. He uses the aircraft carrier analogy. It's like the aircraft carrier versus the cruise ship. Are, Are we on a cruise ship where we eat, drink, and be merry, right? Or in my case, I think of the parable in, in Luke 12, right? If, if you don't remember that, you ought to go read it because it's, it's about the rich fool. Well, I was the not-so-rich fool, right? Which is basically if I can collect enough and I can gather all the things that I'm going to someday enjoy in my retirement, then everything will be okay. I'll eat, drink, and be merry. And I don't know if you remember how that parable ends. He dies that very day in Jesus' story. 
Well, that's the difference between the cruise ship and the aircraft carrier, because the aircraft carrier, are we equipping the saints, giving them the tools, giving them even the challenge, the encouragement to go out and spend our precious time in the workplace? And you say, well, is the workplace a fruitful environment? There are more broken people, there is more temptation, and maybe the biggest component of this is we have better and deeper relationships at work than maybe we have anywhere else in our lives. Now, you could editorialize on whether or not that's the right equation, but in terms of being a fruitful environment, this is where I get kind of frustrated that, that I think there's a huge orientation to go you know, 3,000, 5,000, 8,000 miles away and do mission work, which I think is great. But perhaps the most fruitful mission field of all is the three miles you drive or 30 miles you drive to your office. Or, I think of people in this room who are job seekers. How many opportunities do we have every single week to interface with people and they're expecting somebody who's struggling and maybe what they see is somebody who's got hope, somebody who's got encouragement, somebody who says instead of, have you got any jobs for me, who says, what can I do to help you? What, what, can, what reaction can the other person have other than, wow, what's different about this person? How, how about just doing excellent work? Have you, have you ever noticed some people you just comment to yourself, gosh, they just always do great work. Or they have balance in their life. I personally have always been impressed by people who are successful and are balanced. Because I was lousy at that. I've gotten better at it in the last few years because my wife and I, twice in, in my career and our lives, basically decided to stop the insanity and, and let's change the game. And the last time we did it was seven years ago. And we sat down, and I was working for Spherion at the time, loved the job, traveling way too much, working way too hard, three teenage daughters, kind of different stages of, of teenagehood, if you will, and, and felt like I had one last opportunity to change the game. And I took a, what I believe to this moment is a step of obedience, and we attacked our costs, reduced our costs by 35%, as, as an attempt to say, let's stop living this kind of good income but, but uh, good spend, right? High income, high spend kind of deal. Let's, let's change that equation so that I can today begin to do the things that I feel God is calling me to do. And, and for me, that might be career ministry. For you, that might be sharing your heart with somebody else in the workplace. How many people, I'm just curious, I will do it real fast so nobody knows who raised their hand. How many people feel well-equipped to share their faith with coworkers. Great, so we got maybe half the group, okay? My question is, how often do you do it? And if you're not well equipped, how can you get well equipped? Because when it comes back to purpose, all of a sudden when we have this perspective that we have the ability to use our workplace where we have relationships, where there are broken people, where we have the time and the energy, there is nothing more eternally significant than that. And that's what I'm getting excited about every single day. In fact, the thing uh, I wanted to share about the whole, what Bill talked about in terms of the whole program is the Empower program. Remind me, Bill, when does the, the next seven weeks of that Empower program start? Where'd Bill go? Last week of August. Last week of August. Okay, so, so August 26th or something like that? One's a Wednesday and one's on Thursday. Okay. I'm going to, I've been to one of them, and my intent is to go to every single one of them in between my travel schedules, and if it takes me two more sessions of that Empower training, I'm intent on doing that. And my challenge to all of you is, is what are you doing to get equipped in that regard? Because the next question I'd like to ask everybody in the room is, how many people in here are in full-time ministry? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. And, and that's, that's my prayer. My prayer is that you'll use this opportunity. And maybe 
maybe this silly book, and just so I make a comment on the book, the, the book is a ministry for my wife and I. And what I've said, and probably many of you have heard me say this before at different events, if you are in transition and, and can't afford one, please take one, free. If you're in transition and can afford $6, which is what I pay for it, great, leave $6. If you're working, we're going to really hammer you for $10, okay? <laughs> and, and I would love for you, if you're working, that once you've read it, give it to somebody you care about who may struggle with these issues of work and life balance and finding purpose in their work and trying to create relevance in that work environment. And, and that's really where my heart is. And so I, um, uh, if you don't mind, I'd love to, to just close with a, a little prayer. Dear Lord God, we, uh, we're so grateful to have this time together this afternoon. Uh, thank you for the gift of this lunch that we all got a, because somebody was generous enough to create this environment that allows us to share our faith, for me to share a little bit about my journey, my struggles. Lord, you know, you hear from me all the time in our wrestling matches. I, I pray that if others in this room are struggling with the same issues or trying to find how to create more purpose in their life, finding ways to try to, to fulfill, as Bill said, the Great Commission, uh, to, to do your work, to be the hands and feet of Christ in our daily walks. I just pray that you will equip them, enable them, encourage them uh, to, uh, to do all that they can. And we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of eternity. And uh, we just pray all of this, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you.